The Plant America Initiative from National Garden Clubs seeks to inspire clubs all across the Americas to make their communities greener and more sustainable. In a previous video, David Robeson told us all about the Plant America Community Project Grant and how your club can apply for up to $1,000 for a great project. Today, we'd like to introduce you to three clubs who won Plant America Community Project Grants and share with you the amazing projects that they did to enhance their communities. Our first presenter comes out of the West Hampton Garden Club in the West Hamptons, New York. And I turn it over to Inger Mejan. Inger? Hello, everyone. I am Inger Mejan, a past president and a garden chair of the West Hampton Garden Club. It is my pleasure to share this story of our garden with you. Quag is a small beach community of the south shore of Long Island, New York. The West Hampton Garden Club has 78 active members, over half which live in the nearby village of Quag. Here you see the slide. The memorial centerpiece is a six foot steel I-beam, which came from the wreckage at ground zero. On the left is the memorial without the garden. It should be noted that the centerpiece of this memorial garden was refurbished for the 20th anniversary, which you can see on the right. The steel structure has water trickling down it and is lit up at night. In 2011, New York State gave the Quag Fire Department this I-beam section as a thank you for answering the call that day and showing their bravery by raising down to help. Here is a bird's eye view of the Battery Conservancy. Our project was done as an extension of the Battery Parks Gardens of Remembrance that are located down at the very tip of Manhattan. On September 11, 2001, the Battery Park, once a place of joy and beauty, was suddenly a shelter for those running for their lives during one of the deadliest attacks on our nation's soil. Two years later, in 2003, Worry Price, the founder and president of the Battery Conservancy, set out to restore the 25-acre gardens and shows Peter Udolf, the Dutch landscape artist, to transform the space. Roughly 10,000 square feet, the park's gardens of remembrance are situated along the elevated border of the Battery Promenade, with over 5,000 perennials from more than 100 unique species. This project put Pete Udolf's work on an international stage. Fast forward to 2015. Our tribute to the Quag Volunteer Fire Department began with an idea to create a sacred place, a garden. In late 2019, we applied for the 1,000 grant from Plant America, and by December 12th, we were thrilled to be the recipients. Plant America brought the sunshine in on this project and made the entire operation possible. We wanted plants that had a connection to Lower Manhattan and with the cuttings from the Battery Park's Gardens of Remembrance, we accomplished that. But the new year, 2020, the West Hampton Garden Club had a plan along with the Battery Garden designers and we started figuring out a garden for Quag. Then March 2020 hit us with COVID and everything closed down or was canceled or postponed until the following year. During lockdown, we stayed in touch by email. We would not complete the garden until following year in May of 2021. On May 19, 2021, Four members of the West Hampton Garden Club traveled to the Battery Park where we celebrated our collaboration 
and transported the 68 plants with the help of the Quag Fire Department, firefighters and their band. The next day, Dragonfly Landscape Design contributed by donating their full service in preparing the garden beds and planting what we had brought from the battery. It was a glorious thing to watch this garden grow. The West Hampton Garden Club maintains the Qua Garden of Remembrance. All weeding, pruning is done seasonally and we help out our pollinators, friends, by using only organic materials. We use a product called Deer Scram that is organic to keep the foliage from getting nibbled on. We see this garden in our loving care for many years to come. As you can see in our budget here, the, to the total cost of this garden was approximately $5,000. But the actual amount that our West Hampton Garden Club had to spend was just a little over $500. The rest came in via donations and our grant for which we are very thankful. In addition to using cuttings from the battery, we also fell in love with the perennial style of Pete Udo. So the West Hampton Garden Club worked with Bori Price and her team drawing up the landscape plan and curating the plants to make our memorial garden more inviting. Pete Udolf is known for his use of plant material. He is the founder and figurehead of the new perennials movement. You can see in this slide what we selected. I would like you to take a look at that. There are eight wonderful plants here. These plants have all received awards within the last 15 years and are all magnets of pollinators. Here you see Warwick top middle with her crew in the black t-shirts. Our firefighters on the right came to pick up the plants like they did with the I-beam in 2011. We thank our partners, the Battery Conservancy, the Quag Fire Department, National Garden Club's Plant America Project Grant, Dragonfly Landscape Design, our local mayor's office in Quag, Thank you all for your contributions, which allowed this historic garden to become a reality. Our club ordered a beautiful bronze plaque for the garden, which was installed for the anniversary memor memorial service. The plaque reads in alphabetical order. We were interviewed by the Southampton Press, who published a great story along with excellent photo documentation. Andrew Botsford's Atqua Quanantuk blog featured us in a wonderful article. And the GCA's e-newsletter from September 21 put us front and center on their site with a beautiful photograph of the garden. West Hampton Garden Club website. The Qua Garden of Remembrance is a tribute to the fire department for their bravery on 9-11. It is also an offering to our community as both a place to grieve and bring hope for peace here and around the world. If you want to read the full story of the Qua Garden of Remembrance journey, please go to www.westhamptongardenclub.org. May this memorial garden bring peace and solace to to the hearts of those who have experienced deep loss. We welcome anyone who wishes to come visit this place in person. Thank you. Thank you, Inger. Our next garden comes from Southern Illinois, outside of Paducah, and here to present that project, a community garden food insecurity sustainability project is Elaine Dunn. Elaine? My name is Elaine Dunn and I represent the Anna Joe Garden Club of Illinois. I'm a past president of my club and I have served as director of District 7 in the Garden Clubs of Illinois. 
Uh, we are located in deep Southern Illinois. We're no, near the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. The Shawnee National Forest covers a large part of our region. So we have optimum habitat for wildlife. Wetlands here are protected. We are fortunate to be in the Mississippi Flyway, the route used by many species of birds as they migrate in the fall and the spring. It's a popular destination for birding enthusiasts. Our garden project uh, had a mission of to create a space to cultivate food and foster community through organic gardening for the Shawnee Development Council Food Pantry. To involve garden club members and the community in sustainable garden practices. In 2016, during the inception and planning stages of this project, we were aware of the high rate of food insecurity in our rural community. Families and seniors alike depend on supplies they receive from the, from the food pantry. It is a program of the Illinois Department of Human Services with subsidies coming also from the Emergency Food Fund and the United States Department of Agriculture. To that end, the Anajo Garden Club secured the use of public land across the parking lot from that food pantry. It's an ideal level open grassy area. In 2016, our club members began the garden on a small scale with three raised beds and a temporary fence. In addition to providing a learning experience for sustainable gardening, the crops harvested from our garden were available for distribution by the food pantry. In 2017, we learned about the Plant America grant available from the National Garden Clubs and we applied for the maximum $1,000. In 2018, we learned that we had been approved for the grant and we continued growing our garden. Uh, the budget here, you can see that uh, the Plant America grant was a large part of our financial, financial means for this garden. Uh, our garden club also donated some money. The food pantry itself donated some. And uh, GCI had another small grant that we, were, we applied for and we received. You can see here that we needed wood for fencing and to build the uh, raised beds. We needed tools, we needed houses, and that sort of thing. So this is a picture of our landscaping. Uh, it is a 40 foot by 60 foot garden fenced in. We have raised beds, mulched walkways, composted area, and tool shed. Volunteers are shown here installing cold row covers for plants that are um, appropriate for growing in the spring before the last frost and in the fall after the first frost. In this garden, most of the beds are, they measure four feet by 20 feet. Each bed is lined with landscape fabric and filled with compost rich garden soil. The pathways between the beds allow access to tend the crops and they're heavily mulched to prevent weeds from growing in that area. The labor involved in building the hardscape was provided by garden club members. Shawnee Development Council Food Pantry personnel and volunteers from the community. In the next slide, you see a list of the plants that we grew. The picture here is of squash. We also grew lettuce, spinach, kale, radishes, and the ones that you see in the list there. Some plants were chosen to extend the growing season into cold weather, as I already mentioned. Uh, the garden has many root crops, such as the beets and carrots and turnips and sweet potatoes. We also grow various herbs. In the next slide, I think we will see the pole beans pretty much dominate the garden in the, in the summer, the hot part of the summer, they grow over your head. Um, here you see more greens that uh, have been brought in to the food pantry for distribution. With um, so many greens coming in, people started asking for salad dressing. So a couple of our local grocery stores uh, gave us a nice supply of salad dressings. We built a lot of the maintenance into our, into our garden as we built it. 
we planned to use organic weed spray, mulch for weed control, compost for soil improvement, and uh, put up fences and plant choices for pest control. And then we put in irrigation for convenience during dry spells. Our intentional planning uh, took all of that maintenance, those maintenance needs into account. The photo uh, on the left shows marigolds planted among rows of vegetables. Insects environments such as rabbits are deterred by the scent of marigolds. If a weed dares to grow in this garden, it's met with weed spray. The recipe is one gallon of vinegar, two cups Epsom salts, and one fourth cup of dish soap. Chemical products are not used for weed or pest control in an environmental friendly, sustainable garden. Following the harvests, the remaining plants go into the compost bin. There is no shortage of vegetation left to compost. After a few months, it's ready to spread on the beds again to replace nutrients for the next crop. Uh, we have a wash station that we put in just inside the fence of the garden. Prior to adding that wash station, all the food was processed inside the pantry. It was very crowded, not, we didn't really have the space for it in there. So now the cleaning and packaging is done at the wash station. Harvesting and washing and packaging the vegetables is quite labor intensive. And it's done by our same labor force that, that helped to build it. Several, many volunteers have, have uh, joined us since the beginning. For public involvement, the Garden Club members conducted a seminar at the garden to the public to demonstrate how to build a raised bed. Then attendees assisted with the construction of the beds. From, from the beginning of this project, articles were placed in our local weekly newspaper about the garden being built. So the community was informed. Garden Club members continue to update Union County Commissioners about the gardens during public meetings. Participation is open to everyone. A notebook in the garden area allows volunteers to communicate and log in the garden tasks they performed. These are screenshots taken off of Facebook. The name of our Facebook page is Union County Gardens, sharing knowledge, food, and friendship. It's always available for viewing to see the latest updates of happenings in the garden. Volunteers are always welcome to participate in providing equitable access to locally grown food. They can be seen broadcasting from the garden live each Tuesday morning. You can see that our garden started in 2017 with just a few beds that we had, produced quite a lot of vegetables to give away. It continued to grow in 2018 as we built the garden larger and in 2019. Then we took a little dip because of COVID in 2020. And last year we produced over a ton of vegetables, literally for giving away at the food pantry. We think this is evidence that successful planning, implementing and maintaining organic sustainable garden practices have worked for us. We're very, uh, proud to be able to share. The next picture is um, of one of the one of the work days, bringing in the washed and uh, prepared vegetables to the food pantry. Thank you, Elaine. I I'm still blown away by the fact that you're almost eight thousand pounds of food that you've given away. So, bravo to you and all of your volunteers. Thank you. Our next project comes from Beaufort, South Carolina, and the Palmetto Garden Club, who created a pollinator garden where one had not been before. And here to present that is Ann Widener. Ann? Hi, everyone. I'm Ann Widener, past president of Beaufort Palmetto Garden Club. 
As Trish said, we planted a Secession Park pollinator garden project. We took basically a, an ignored small pocket garden right on the main street of Beaufort, across from the Beaufort River, and in front of the historic Secession House, and we turned it into a beautiful four season pollinator perennial garden. Our timeline was in the winter of 2019, we began our planning and we decided to identify a project that would include the elements of designing, planting, maintaining a perennial pollinator garden. During the fall of 2020, we applied for a $1,000 grant from the National Garden Club Plan America project. And we were fortunate enough to receive confirmation that we had won this grant in January of 2021. And we were suddenly very busy because by the second quarter of 2021, we were uh, preparing the site um, and, and we started planting this garden. Working through the summer and into the fall we, uh, of, of 2021, we, at the end of the fall, we had completed our project in terms of our planting. Our budget for this project and we knew it would be quite expensive. And for a small garden club, um, the $1,000 grant was so appreciated and very necessary in order to be able to, to fulfill uh, the dreams of, of our club. So $1,000 came from the garden, from the grant, $445 came from our garden club and an in-kind donation from the city of Beaufort. They donated six coneflower plants and they have provided irrigation for us throughout the project. And with our landscaping plan, we took a pre-existing garden and we, our goal was to improve it for the benefit of the residents of our community and the many tourists that visit during the year. Our committee to plan this garden consisted of five members and four of whom are South Carolina master gardeners. They were Debbie Tate, Kathy Hodges, our club president, Darlene Dudley, Caroline Hauser, and myself. We modeled this garden after the coastal Georgia botanical gardens at the historic bamboo farm in Savannah, Georgia. We went on several visits. We looked at their plants as they, the pollinator gardens in different seasons. We learned about their planting and their main, main maintenance practices, and then set to work figuring out which plants would do best on in our site. If you all in, have a chance to be in the South and in, near Savannah, I would strongly suggest that you do visit the Coastal Georgia Botanical Gardens. It is just amazing. The pollinator garden is just one of many gardens that they have there. So put that on their to-do list um, of gardens to see in the United States. All of our labor was donated. We calculated the number of hours that we had worked and 515 hours was the total at an hourly rate of $10 an hour. And so when we looked at the total cost, our members had put in $5,150 worth of work, you know, quite a labor intensive project, but a lot of fun. It was one of the few times that we could all be outside together during COVID, so it was perfect. Um, we did have uh, a relative of two club members who donated his personal time um, operating a backhoe to remove a very entrenched existing hedge and it took quite a lot of work. Our little arms and hose and <laughs> shovels didn't even begin to get that hedge. So we were very appreciative of his contribution. The plants that we used were purchased from several local retail garden centers and a wholesaler who also sells to the public in the Beaufort area. And as mentioned before, the six coneflower plants donated by the city. In this picture, you see a, uh, all of the pentas in one section of the front of the garden, and they're, they're quite beautiful. You can see we're getting ready to plant them. The plants used were dwarf podocarpus, black and blue sylvia, hot lip sil salvia, firecracker plant, milkweed, and bush daisy. And in the front of this picture, you see a firecracker plant 
It's hard to tell because there are very few little red tiny flowers, but when these are in full bloom and they bloom all year long, they have red, red blooms on them. They're just lovely and it gives some winter color also. On the, in the back of the photo, you see our podocarpus hedge there. Continuing with the plants, we planted lantana, lucky, and it was a lucky sunrise rose variety, coneflower, powwow wild berry, and they are stellar plants, and also three herbs, fennel, flat leaf parsley, and blue spires basil. basil. In the lower, in the front part of this particular picture to the right, you see the flat leaf parsley. And we use that as edging on two sections of this garden and it turned out beautiful and lasted well into the winter and spring. On the photograph on the left, what you see is a picture of the garden facing the water uh, at the waterfront park. So it's quite a lovely scene and very restful there. The maintenance of the garden, our garden club will continue to maintain this garden. Our members volunteer, they sign up once a week to weed and water the site. And then we have group work days used to mulch and prune and fertilize the garden. And that's a picture of some of our garden members on one of our work days. In the South, we are very, very lucky to have a lot of pine trees and they provide a much needed mulch. So the little squiggly lines you see in the bed there, that's our mulch. And it works, it keeps our plants cool in the summer and warm in the winter. The plants in the photo, the far right plant that's very green, like lemon lime green, is a salvia, black and blue salvia. The, in the middle, the toward the front, you see a coneflower plant with a couple of <clears throat> blooms ready to pop. And then there's a little tiny gray area right at the front uh, that you'll see. And that is, believe it or not, fennel. And it was outstanding looking, particularly, I mean, all year long, it would, it just did beautifully waving in the breezes. Um, and it was just, it, it, it just was a, a surprise actually. Along the back, you see our podocarpus hedge again. This garden brings much enjoyment, uh, both visually and aromatically to the residents in the historical district and visitors alike. They are, they are, folks are always walking by, stopping, um, looking, sitting. There's some lovely benches to sit and rest and look out to the water as well as with, at the plants. Um, we, when we are working at the site, uh, we stop, talk, people ask questions, we provide information about which plants, how to plant a pollinator garden, and um, sharing that if this is maybe a project that they would like to take back to their own communities. We also have signage identifying all the plants in the garden, and that's very helpful for many of our visitors from other places. To spread the word about our garden, the South Carolina Gardener magazine published an article about this project in their winter 2022 issue. Just this month, Beaufort Magazine um, has published an article about our secession garden. And we sent this information to the National Garden Club in December of 2021. And voila, the result of that is here I am today speaking to many of you throughout the United States about this wonderful and happy project for us. And I hope that many of you will take this to heart and find some area in your community to also provide this kind of, of beauty. Thank you very much. I, I'd like to thank first Beverly Whitaker, our club secretary for doing all the lovely um, computer work, putting the slideshow together. And with Palmetto Garden Club, I'd like to thank all of our members who have, commit, have committed to this and have graciously uh, worked on work days and volunteered in many other ways and helping us. I'd like to thank Plan America Grants. Without you, we could not have done this. The city of Beaufort that, and particularly Linda Roper, Roper, our contact person with their involvement of letting us have a share of one of the city gardens and to the South Carolina Garden for Life 
initiative. So we are grateful to all of these organizations and folks who have helped us along the way. It's been great. Thank you. What I think my favorite part is that you didn't just come up with this plan and try to do it yourselves. You were smart enough to model it after a local garden that was already successful. So when our other clubs are thinking about partners to engage, also think about partner models, stuff that you can emulate. Why reinvent the wheel when you have great examples all around you? These were just three projects of over 300 projects across the United States. If you would like to apply for a Plant America Community Project Grant, please visit us at www.gardenclub.org. And whether you plant a project or not, please plant America. Thank you for joining us.